Hi, I'm Daniel Souza and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is part two on lecture on probability. Now, before we start our first sum, there are a couple of things that one is assumed to know. In most questions, you're going to have three scenarios. It'll have to do something with coins, with dice, or with cards. So let's just see the basics of all of these. In sums involving coins, you're going to have two possibilities, right? You will either have a heads or you're going to have a tails, right? So your sample space is going to have two outcomes, either a heads or a tails. In problems involving dice, you're going to have six outcomes. For each side of the dice, of the die, you're going to have six outcomes, right? So you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, or six. Any one of these can land. So your sample space is going to have six outcomes. Now, in a standard deck of cards, you're going to have 52 cards. Now, these 52 cards are divided into four suits. So you've got your spades, clubs, hearts, and diamonds. Now, all of these four suits are also subdivided again because these two are in black and these two are in red. So these two are known as your black suits and these are known as your red suits. So your hearts and diamonds are red suits and spades and clubs are black suits. Each suit has 13 cards. So you've got 13 into 4 is equal to 52. Let's not count the joker for now. So you've got 13 cards in spades, 13 cards of clubs, 13 of hearts and 13 of diamonds, right? Now, each of these suits have four special cards. They're also known as honor cards or face cards. So you've got face cards as ace, jack, queen and king. So you're going to have an ace of spades, jack of spades, queen of spades, king of spades, and so on for all the other four suits. So basically, you have four face cards in every suit, and you have four suits. So you're going to have 16 face cards in your entire deck. Right, so out of your 52 cards, you're going to have 16 special cards or face cards. All right, now with these basics, let's start our first sum. Problem one, in a single throw of die, what is the probability of getting a number greater than four? Alright, now for the first sum they've said that you roll a die and you're supposed to find out what is the probability of getting a number that is greater than 4. So now, since it's a die, you know the sample space is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, right? A die has 6 faces and on each of them you have 1 number, right? So now when you roll a die, you're either going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. Now, when you're calculating the probability of an event A, let's say the event A is that you get a number greater than 4. So, you're going to have something on top and something below. Below is going to be all the total possible outcomes and on top is going to have the desired number of outcomes. So your desired number of outcomes is going to be when you get whatever you want. So your probability of a number greater than 4. Which of the numbers here are greater than 4? 5 and 6, correct? Right. So you can either have 5 or you can have 6. Now, do not count 4 because they've asked you greater than, not greater than equal to. If it was greater than or equal to, you could have counted 4. But in this problem, they've only asked you greater than. So you have to count 5 and 6. So 5 and 6 are two possibilities, right? So here you're going to have 2. Your desired cases are 2. Your total cases are what can happen, right? So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So when you roll a die, any of these faces can show up. So you have 6 possible outcomes. So you've got 6 possible outcomes. So basically what this says is I want only these 2 to come out out of these 6. So what is the probability? So this is 1, 3, so 1 by 3. But since it's probability, we're going to write it between 0 and 1. So it's going to be 0 0.33. So the probability of rolling a die and getting a number greater than 4 is 0 0.33. Let's go on to problem number 2. Problem 2. In a simultaneous throw of two dice, what is the probability of getting a total of 7? Alright, in the second sum, you've got two dice that have been thrown simultaneously. Right? So basically, it's an independent event. Now they're asking you what is the probability that the numbers that you get from the dice will sum up to 7. Exactly 7. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to write down all the possible combinations of D1 and D2, that is dice 1 and dice 2, and we're going to see which of the possibilities can give us 7. So let's write it down. We've got 1, 6, right? 1 and 6, <coughs> 2 and 5, right? 3 and 4. Now you see the combination, right? 1 and 6, 2, 5, 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 2, 6, 1, right? So 4, 3, 5, 2, and 6, 1. So basically what we've done is we've written the combination of numbers which can give us a sum of 7. Now, you've got 6 possibilities here. Apart from these 6, nothing else is going to give you a combination of 7. Right? So, when you're calculating the probability of the event A, let's say the event A is that you get a sum equal to 7, you're going to write the desired outcomes upon the total outcomes. So, your desired outcomes is 6. The total outcomes is not going to be 6 like the first sum. It's going to be 36 now. Because you've got 6 possibilities here. And following that, you have 6 possibilities, right? So total is going to be 6 into 6, that is 36. Now, when you solve this, 6 1s are 6 are 
So the probability of the die turning up as 7, both of them, will be 1 over 6. Easy? Let's go on to problem number 3. Problem 3. In a simultaneous throw of two dice, what is the probability of getting a doublet? Alright, now problem number 3, they are again asking you to throw two dice simultaneously. But this time they are asking you what is the probability of you getting a doublet. What's a doublet? A doublet is basically what the name says, double numbers. So they are basically asking you what is the probability that when you throw two dice, you are going to get numbers like 6, 6, 5, 5, 4, 4, basically the same numbers. So let's say it does the possibilities once more. You have got D1 and D2. Right? Now your doublets are going to be 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5 and 6, 6. So these are your possible desired combinations that you can get. Right? So you've got 6 doublets when you throw 2 die. Now the probability of this event happening is again desired outcomes upon total outcomes. Total outcomes is 36. So 6 ones are, 6 six are. So the probability of you getting a doublet when you throw 2 dice is 1 by 6. Easy? Let's go into problem number four. Problem four. In a simultaneous throw of two dice, what is the probability of getting a total of 10 or 11? All right, on your fourth sum, they're asking you, what is the probability of getting two numbers whose sum is either 10 or 11? Now, now they're saying or. So both of these cases is fine by us. So what we're going to do is we're going to list out the numbers, right? The combinations which will give us 10, right? Then we're going to list out the combinations which give us 11. Add both of those combinations because both of those are favorable to us. So let's add both of those combinations and then those are the total number of favorable conditions for us. So let's do it for 10. So for 10, we can have 4 and 6, 5 and 5, 6 and 4, right? So you've got 4, 6, 5, 5, 6 and 4. You don't write 5, 5 again because they're both the same number. So one instance is fine. When the numbers are different, you need to take the other way around as well. So now you've got for sum is equal to 10, You've got three possible combinations. Now, for sum is equal to 11, since that is also okay with us, right? It's written odd, so it's fine. Now, for sum is equal to 11, you can have 5 and 6, 6 and 5, right? You've got just two combinations. So 5, 6, 6 and 5. So you've got two combinations here. So totally, you've got five favorable conditions, right? Five of these cases, if it comes, we are fine with it because the sum can be 10 or it can be 11. So when you find the probability, P of A, right? The total number of desired cases is not going to be 3 or it's going to be 2. It's going to be 5, the addition of both of these. So your favorable cases, your desired outcomes is 5 upon the total outcomes is 36. So your final answer is going to be 5 by 36. Alright, so this is part 2 on lecture probability. In part 3, I'll be solving many more tougher problems. So make sure you check that out as well. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd also appreciate it if you tell your friends about it and spread the knowledge. Cheers! If you got a doubt during any part of this lecture, make sure you leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until then, spread the knowledge.